Hey guys, so real quick, a disclaimer before we start the video. I had originally recorded the audio for this before No Way Home came out, so if you're wondering why I keep talking about No Way Home coming out soon, that's why. This video actually ended up taking longer than I thought, and I had some personal stuff that I had to deal with that took me out for a few days, so this video ended up getting delayed till after the movie came out. Oops. Anyways, it's out now, and it doesn't really change the main purpose of this video anyways, so enjoy. So, Spider-Man No Way Home is right around the corner, and rumors have been swirling for months now that this movie is going to be a live-action Spider-Verse movie. That along with the obvious showing of Tom Holland, we're also going to see the previous portrayals of Spider-Man by Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, once again in this new Spidey movie. That with the multiverse concept introduced in the MCU, we can easily explain Toby and Andrew's possible showing in No Way Home as them being other universes' Spider-Men. And with that idea now being a possibility, as well as some leaks that seem to confirm everything that I just said, this new Spider-Man movie is likely setting up to be the biggest, most ambitious Spider-Man film yet. Everyone's excited to see our three Spider-Men join forces to take on what looks like another thing that's never been done, another first time ever, the Sinister Six, appropriately comprised of all the past Spider-Man villains from the Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies, making their returns to the big screen as well. Green Goblin, Dr. Octopus, Sandman, The Lizard, Electro, and... Wait, let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five... There has to be a six villain in there somewhere, right? No? Hmm. Eh, maybe Tom Hardy's Venom will show up. That would be cool as fuck, though, seeing characters from three different Marvel universes. But either way, Spider-Man No Way Home is going to be epic. Everyone's happy, everyone's excited, it's the holidays, the mood can't get any better. No matter which Spider-Man of the three that you love, no matter which one is your favorite, you're probably going to get to see him on the big screen when this movie comes out. And that's why, before that happens, I need to say that Tom Holland's Spider-Man is the worst Spider-Man of the three. That's right, you heard me, he is hot ass garbage. Now, let me tell you guys a little story, okay? Get your warm milk and tuck yourselves in, it's story time. I was still in high school when Captain America Civil War came out, alright? And I was taking a computer science class, you know, where you do coding and that kind of stuff. It, it, that doesn't matter, I don't know why I'm telling you that. Point is, the Civil War trailer came out and I hadn't watched it yet. But my friend in that computer science class came in and told me about it, and I was like, psh. Whatever. So Iron Man and Captain America are fighting. Big whoop. But then he told me that a new Spider-Man was in it, which immediately got my attention. Spider-Man is my favorite superhero of all time. Always has been, always will be. My first memory of watching a superhero movie before any of the MCU movies or the X-Men movies or... That one Hulk movie with Eric Bana. Before any of that stuff came out, my first memory of seeing a superhero on my screen was Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man. That's what introduced me to superheroes in the first place. I remember having the VHS tapes of the Tobey Maguire movies. I remember when Spider-Man 3 came out and I was on vacation in a foreign country, I actually bought the DVD of the movie in a foreign language, just so I could finally watch it. I didn't understand shit, and quite frankly, maybe that was for the best. Now dig on this. But I didn't care. I loved it anyways. Then, when Andrew Garfield's Spidey films came out, I watched those. And I quite liked Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man too. I'll get into why in a second. But remember what I said before about my friend telling me that Spider-Man was back in the Civil War trailer? Well, I immediately pulled the trailer up and watched. And when we got to the end and I saw Spider-Man, well, it went a little something like this. Under Roos! Hey everyone. Ew! Ew! <laughs> what the fuck was that? Hell no! Oh my god, that was a little fucking kid! Yeah, I'm not joking either. That was pretty much how me and my friend reacted to seeing this little kid pipsqueak voice version of Spider-Man. Somewhere between horror and hilarity. But I thought, hey, so what if he's a kid? Who says a kid can't play Spider-Man? Let's give him a chance. Maybe he'll be alright. And I could not have been more wrong in my life. This version, Tom Holland's version of Spider-Man, 
is the goddamn worst version of Spider-Man. Not only that, but all the other Spider-Man characters in the MCU are the worst versions of themselves to date. And I'll be explaining all of this in just a second. But I feel first, we should start with the man of the hour himself, Tom Holland, as Spider-Man. Number one, Tom Holland looks and sounds too goddamn young to play Spider-Man. How, how old are you now? I'm 23 now, yeah. Because you do look ridiculously young. Thank you. So, like, can you... Now, this was the first thing that I noticed, and if you noticed before, I tried to give it a pass, but at the end of the day, I just can't hold it in anymore. I just hate how young this boy looks and sounds, and I still do. Now, some of you may be thinking, what's the problem with having a kid play Spider-Man? Well, it wouldn't really be a problem if he wasn't the only kid playing a superhero. That's right, in a world full of adult superheroes, Tom Holland is the minnow in an ocean filled with carps, bass, salmon, and sharks. Now, what's the problem with this? Well, it leads to all the other heroes kind of looking down on him and treating him for what he is, a kid. And I wouldn't really have a problem with this, except this is Spider-Man we're talking about. To have all the other heroes looking down on him as an underoos or a ward or an apprentice is kind of insulting, considering that Spider-Man is arguably the most popular superhero in Marvel and should be treated as such. He should be treated as an equal. But that's not the case. In these movies, it seems like he's Iron Man's apprentice, which I hate. Spider-Man shouldn't be anybody's apprentice. He's more than good enough as a superhero to stand on his own. Toby and Andrew did it just fine in their movies, but in this, Tom Holland's Spider-Man kinda has to lean on Iron Man, sometimes a bit too much, but I'll get into that more after this next point. Number two, Tom Holland's Spidey suit looks fucking disgusting. This was the second thing that I noticed, once I got past what he sounded like. His Spidey suit looks like fucking shit. Look, he doesn't even fit into his suit. He has to use something within the suit to fit it onto his body because he's just too small. Now, I wouldn't go as far as to say that it's the worst Spidey suit, but god damn do I hate this suit. Everything from the material it looks like it's made out of, to the adjustable eyes, to the design, it's all so bad. The old Spidey suits look like they were made of this super cool material. I don't know how to explain it because I don't know what it is, but they just were. Tom's looks like it's made out of some cheap-ass cloth. I've never liked the adjustable eyes either. Maybe it's just because I got used to the fixed eyes of Toby and Andrew, but Tom Holland's adjustable eyes just look weird. I'm sorry, they just do. Also, I hate the design of this suit. It looks so amateur and childish. The web lines on his suit look like they were drawn with black marker. See these suits? These suits have web lines on them that look like actual webbing. It looks like there's a web covering the suits. And I like that because it makes sense. Because the whole gimmick is based on a spider. And the design is just so much more professional looking. Like, look at Tom Holland's suit design. Look at the spider logo on the back. It looks like a child drew that. That looks like what a child would draw if you told them to draw a spider. These spider symbols look cool. They look sharp and badass. I don't know, maybe I just really miss Andrew Garfield's Amazing Spider-Man 2 suit. That was like the most perfect Spider-Man suit, hands down. I'd make love in that thing. Also, I should probably be more clear about this when I say that I hate every variation of Tom Holland's Spidey suit. They're just not as iconic as the classic red and blue suit. I especially hate the Iron Spider suit. Not only is it more similar to Tony Stark's Iron Man suit with the high-tech gadgetry and stuff like that than any of the other Spidey suits, which is saying something because the other Spidey suits are already too techy, which I also hate, but it it leads into my next point. Number three, Tom Holland's Spider-Man is too similar to Iron Man. This could honestly go into a broader conversation about Iron Man's place in the MCU and how it honestly seems bigger than the entire cinematic universe itself, much to this universe's detriment, because what happens is you end up with a bunch of carbon copies of Iron Man, but to save time, we'll just talk about Spider-Man specifically. There's a reason why people call Tom Holland's Spider-Man Iron Boy Jr., because that's what it feels like they're turning this universe's Spider-Man into. At some point, it doesn't even really feel like Spider-Man anymore and more like Iron Man the Second, just based on the fact that Tom's Spidey suit is pretty much just a spider-themed Iron Man suit. 
You can also see this universe tease Spider-Man being the next Iron Man in Far From Home, and I really hate that they're trying to do that. I mentioned in my Falcon and the Winter Soldier review that my main problem with Sam Wilson taking up the Captain America mantle is that he already had his own identity as Falcon, and I never liked it when a hero just took up another hero's identity because it made it feel like they were losing their individuality. We already have way too many Iron Men in this universe, so the fact that they're making Spider-Man into the next one is just really disappointing to me. Number 4. Tom Holland Spider-Man is a fucking idiot. I really mean this. This kid can't do anything right. Whether it's failing an interrogation by emulating a character that's not even from your freaking universe. What happened to your voice? What do you mean what happened to my voice? It's Kryptonian. Only kryptonite weapons can kill us. Or leaving an interrogation before he has all the information. I didn't tell you where. You don't have a location. Right, of course. Yeah, my bad, silly. Just, yeah. Where is it? Or accidentally cutting a boat in half and needing Iron Man's help to fix it. Or causing massive property damage. Or being the first Spider-Man to miss out on a kiss from your love interest. Whatever it may be, this kid just sucks at his job. The other Spider-Men mess up a bit at first too. But eventually, they learn the whole crime fighting thing and get the hang of it pretty quickly. This is how I like my superheroes. Competent and fast learning. But Tom Holland's Spider-Man movies have shown him messing everything up or just being a total dumbass, and I hate it. Number 5. Tom Holland's Spider-Man is annoying as hell. Now, I get that Spider-Man is supposed to quip and throw out little wisecracks and stuff, but Tom Holland's Spider-Man is just fucking annoying. I don't know what it is. Something about him. Magic! More magic! Magic with a kid! Magic with a- the fuck you say to me, you little shit! Honestly, sometimes I feel like his fellow Avengers don't even like him. Gotta say, that's awesome. I don't know if you've been in a fight before, but there's usually not this much talking. All right, sorry, my bad. Um, I'm Spider-Man then. This ship is self-correcting its course. I was crazy to recruit a 14-year-old kid. I'm 15. No, this is where you zip it! See Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man? See how he's messing with this car thief? Now this is funny. Me and my best friends were dying at this scene where he sneezes webs into this guy's crotch. <laughs> that isn't funny. It is Come kind on, of funny. Help. This is how I like my Spider-Man. Funny, not cringy and annoying. Now, despite me ranting like a madman for the past five, ten minutes about how much I hate Tom Holland's Spider-Man, the truth is, he's not the only Spidey character that I have a problem with in this universe. I would be willing to say that all the other Spider-Man characters in this universe are the worst versions of their characters so far. So I got a bit to say about them as well, so let's get into it. Let's start with Aunt May. This one's pretty easy to explain. I do not like this character because this universe's Aunt May has no character. She's probably the most one-dimensional character in the MCU, if I'm being honest. Now, before I go into the specifics, I think we need to look at the other portrayals of Aunt May throughout history. The Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield movies made sure to make Aunt May a significant part of Peter Parker's life. Aunt May is really an emotional core of these movies, and you can see that very clearly in scenes like these. But you made a brave move in telling me the truth, and I'm proud of you, and I thank you, and I, I love you, Peter. I'm your boy. You're my everything. You're enough. You're more than enough. That's not what it's about. Don't get that twisted. I love you so much. But with this Aunt May, you get nothing but scenes of all these different guys wanting to fuck her. Hey May, how you doing? What are you wearing? Something skimpy, I hope. <laughs> well, we didn't order that. Some house. I think I'm gonna go change the sterno under the vegan lasagna. I'm serious. I can't seem to remember one, not one single emotionally significant scene between her and Peter. The closest thing is like the scene after Tony Stark takes away Peter's suit and Peter goes home to Aunt May and she comforts him. But I mean, if you watch the scene... I'm sorry, I made you worry. You know, I'm not trying to ruin your life. Yeah, I know. Just, I used to sneak out too. 
Oh no, stop it, Aunt May. Don't say things like that. I'm trying to hold it together. And the thing is, people actually seem to think that this Aunt May is the best version. And that's really weird to me. Why? Because she's hot? Um, but you know what's great is this choice they've made. They've rebooted this series in so many ways, but this choice they've made to have Aunt May be younger, sexier. Do you know what I mean? That's why you like her? Because she's younger and sexier? That's your reason? That's pretty dumb. That's pretty fucking shallow if we're being completely honest. I'm not necessarily opposed to a younger, hotter Aunt May. I just want her to actually feel like a real human being. I want her to have scenes with Peter that show the significance she holds in Peter's life as opposed to just being a scene for comedic relief because a bunch of guys are in love with her. Next, let's move on to Flash Thompson. This one might be even easier. Plain and simple, this Flash Thompson just doesn't feel convincing enough to be Peter's bully. Now, when I saw the actors that were cast for all the different Spidey characters and I saw that this was going to be our Flash Thompson, my reaction was, what? That's Flash Thompson? How is this kid going to bully Peter? He looks like an even bigger dork than the kid he's bullying. Now, while I didn't think this was such a serious issue that the actor needed to be sent death threats over his casting as Flash, listen guys, you really need to grow up. But truthfully, this does create a problem because every time I saw this kid being a dick to Peter, I just immediately got pulled out of the movie because of how unrealistic it was. Like, bro, if you look like this and you try to run me over with your car as I'm getting to school, I would not, I repeat, I would not even hesitate to jump in your car, throw you out onto the street, and kick your ass. See these other guys that played Flash? I would think twice about picking a fight with these guys. One of them is fucking Deathstroke. I can't handle this shit. I'm not fucking Batman. Next up, we have Mary Jane. No, no, wait, that's not it. It's, it's Michelle Jones, right. Gwen Stacy absolutely sucks in this universe. That's a bit of an exaggeration, I don't think she's that bad. But I think the main problem I have with this character is that the romance she has with Peter feels probably the least convincing out of the three that we have with Peter and Mary Jane and Peter and Gwen. Peter and Mary Jane's relationship? Iconic. Peter and Gwen's relationship? Super cute and realistic. These two couples just have that secret sweet chemistry that you need to bring Peter Parker's love life to life. Now, I'm not talking about Tom and Zendaya, alright? I think those two are actually really sweet and cute together. And their chemistry is off the charts. But Peter Parker and Michelle Jones? I don't know. I like it, but I'm not feeling it as much as I did with the others. The thing is, I don't even know what these two have in common. Like, what do these two actually have with each other to bond over? They're two completely different, opposite personalities. Peter didn't even like her at first, either. He was focused on this other chick. And then in the next movie, he was just like, yeah, I like MJ and I want to spend my summer vacation with her. Where the hell did that come from? You guys seriously showed absolutely nothing beforehand that realistically led up to this. It was just, MJ is stalking Peter. Peter's crush moved away. Okay, Peter is in love with his stalker now. Toby's Peter Parker was neighbors with Mary Jane since they were kids, and he's loved her since then. Plus, they ended up having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation that led to Mary Jane eventually returning those feelings by the end of the first movie. Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker could relate to Gwen with their mutual intelligence, and there were hints of them liking each other with these cute scenes sprinkled all throughout the first Amazing Spider-Man movie. But in the Tom Holland movies, the amount of scenes between Peter and MJ are so minimal, and by the time the second movie rolls around, they just like each other, with almost no buildup at all. And that's probably why I don't really like this version's MJ. Or at least her relationship with Peter. And what about Peter's other friend, huh? What's his name? Ned. Ned? Actually, I'm, I'm alright with Ned. He's cool, I like him. Awesome! It also kind of helps that he probably has the funniest line in this universe of Spider-Man films. I'm looking at porn. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is there? Who's left? Uh, Betty Brant? I don't even know what I can say about this character. No version of this character was really that significant. 
They all had Betty Brant as a pretty minor character, if I'm being honest. Her best showing in the MCU was in Far From Home, but that was mainly due to her interactions with Ned. I'd still consider the Betty Brant from the Tobey Maguire movies as the best version though. I don't know why, I just do. And yeah, I feel like that's it. I don't think there's any other Spidey character in the MCU that we've seen a past iteration of. If there is, they certainly aren't important enough for me to remember them. So yeah, I think that's it. I hope by this point I've made it clear why I don't like Tom Holland's portrayal of Spider-Man slash Peter Parker or any of the other Spidey characters that exist in the MCU. I just really like Toby and Andrew's interpretations of this character. These guys always made me feel proud to look up to Spider-Man because Toby made his Spider-Man so iconic and Andrew made his Peter Parker so cool. And as a kid who related to Peter Parker slash Spider-Man more than any other superhero, it made me feel like I could be just as iconic as Toby's Spider-Man was or just as cool as Andrew's Peter Parker was. I sure as hell don't look up to Iron Boy Jr. over here. There are also some other elements that go beyond the characters that I liked in the past Spider-Man movies as well. One of which is the web-swinging scenes in the previous Spidey movies. I just think they're done so much better. Like, look at some of these scenes. We have Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man swinging throughout the city after making his return as the wall crawler in Spider-Man 2, and the shot pulls out to show that it was the reflection of Doc Ock's glasses. I don't even need to talk about Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man swinging at the beginning of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I think it speaks for itself. But Tom Holland's Spidey movies have, like, no cool web-swinging scenes. It's just, hey, look at me! I'm swinging and texting! Whee! Look, he doesn't even, like, swing in his movies. He just flies. He's like a flying squirrel. This completely defeats the purpose of Spider-Man. But just because I don't like these characters we have now in the MCU, it doesn't mean that I don't like these Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. That's right, after all my bitching and moaning, at the end of the day, I do still like these movies. They're funny at times and entertaining enough, but ultimately what it comes down to is that I just love Spider-Man. As a quiet, nerdy, anti-social loner, like I said, I could relate to Peter Parker more than any other superhero out there. Whenever I watched Peter Parker on my screen, I felt like that was me. I was Peter Parker. I was that quiet, nerdy kid who was alienated by his peers and pined after the popular girl. I even have an Aunt May. Thankfully, not an Uncle Ben, though. And the fact that Peter gets to be this cool, badass guy, both in the mask and out of it, well, that was always really inspiring and uplifting to me as a kid, and it still is to this day. And I know the comic fans will be like, oh, Peter isn't supposed to be cool or badass, but I never read the comics, so I don't care. It's also probably the reason why, going back to what I was saying before, despite Tom's Spidey suit being the most comic accurate, it's still the Spidey suit that I hate the most, and why even though superheroes take up the identities of other superheroes all the time in the comics, I don't like that either. But ultimately, these are the versions of Spider-Man that I grew up with. These are the ones that I know and love, and in the end, to me, these will probably be better than anything Tom Holland could do as Spider-Man.